As a member of the House of Lords and former government minister, Lord Bates is well acquainted with the practices of British politics. He spent much of his working life pacing these corridors of power. I do think there's something interesting about the artwork generally in, in Parliament, is that it does have a very militaristic feel. You see the reality uh, of war as it is, and therefore you know, it behoves us to do everything we can to avoid it. He's one of the most active members of the House of Lords, but his latest campaign has yet to gain a foothold. So he's decided to take to the streets, not here in Britain, but in Greece. It's here that Lord Bates has begun an epic 3,500 mile walk from Olympia, the birthplace of the Olympic Games, to London, hoping to re-establish the Olympic truce. 2,500 years ago, the Greeks were so frustrated by constant wars, they proposed a sporting event where weapons were laid down and conflict was traded for competition. To enable this, they declared a truce for seven days before and seven days after what's become the Olympic Games. Of course, the problem is that fighting men cannot lay down their arms voluntarily because they look weak uh, to their supporters and they look weak uh, at home. And therefore, you need to provide them with an opportunity where they can actually look manly <laughs> and yet stop killing each other. And so the idea of the Games was conceived and a period of truce covered it. That ran for some 1,200 years and violations were extremely rare, one or two in 1,200 years. The concept of the Olympic truce is now backed by a UN resolution, signed unanimously by all 193 member states. And yet since its signing, it's been violated on every occasion. The resolution only asks that you take initiatives for reconciliation during the period of the Games. If the other people don't stop shooting at you, they don't agree to the truce, there can be no truce. Uh, so there was no question uh, that this is a case of uh, getting us to unilaterally lay down our arms. But what it is saying is we have given a solemn undertaking before the United Nations General Assembly that we will do something. If we don't think we can do it, we shouldn't sign it. We shouldn't propose it. If we do propose it and we do sign it, as I'm sure we will, we should implement it. The journey to London is certainly not without its challenges, but it may just inspire the British government to enforce the UN resolution in October this year becoming the first host nation to take the Olympic truce seriously. And today, with more than 30 countries currently at war, the need for truce has never been more important. But not everyone is at first receptive. And uh, walking to London. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's quite a typical reaction that I get when I tell people I'm walking to London. I am 75 years old. I will never Stop saying we are crazy. And do you think Michael is crazy doing this walk? It's going to take him one year. No, it's a very good action doing this because I cannot do that. Lord Bates pushes on till dusk, but unpaid and with no support team, he's at the mercy of whatever accommodation is available. Tonight he's been offered floor space in a local church office. The only light that works is this one. And a sink. And a sink. Luxury, lad. Luxury. Early the next day, he's back on the road again, hoping that every step brings him a little closer to seeing the UN resolution of the Olympic truce brought into reality for London 2012.